Welcome to the Bible Track Echoes radio broadcast. I'm evangelist Micah McCurry, and I'm so proud to introduce to you, if you have not met them already, at least through the audio version of this broadcast here on the radio, to my two daughters, Emmy Jane McCurry and Lucy Louise McCurry. They've been joining me and helping me out during the introduction portion of this broadcast. Miss uh, Emmy, could you uh, tell us hi? Come over here for just a second. Tell us hi. Um... Say hello. Hello. Good job. There you go. She couldn't figure out what to say for a second. Miss Lucy, what do you have to say? Say, Hello. Hello. Very good. Now, let's remind people. Miss Lucy, how old are you? Ten. You're two years old. And Miss Emmy, how old are you? Four. Oh, good night. Hopefully, hopefully your radio was turned down. I have the headphones on here and almost blew my eardrums out there. Miss Emmy, can you help me out here? Uh, I need you to pick a gospel track for us to talk about on the radio broadcast today. Which one looks good to you? Pick that one. Hold on, you can pick that one tomorrow, okay? We'll put that one aside for you tomorrow. <gasps> good job. Here we go. This one's called You Can Know. You can know what? How about some real answers to eternal issues? The Bible has the answers to questions like this Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Where do the lost go when they die? Those are heavy questions. Those are important questions. And this gospel track answers those questions. One of the most important questions is this. Can I know that when I die, I will go to heaven? Well, the Bible says in John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. This gospel track titled, You Can Know, it explains the concept of salvation and forgiveness. I'm going to ask you, if you would, would you go to BibleTracksInc.org? Can you say that, Lucy? Can you say BibleTracksInc.org? Can you try that? Yeah. Good try. All right, Emmy, you come over here. Now, Lucy is two, and she does a great job. Sometimes sometimes she says things, and it takes an interpreter to quite figure it out. i got to say it a couple times. But let's see, Miss Emmy, can you come over here? Oh, oh don't, don't smack the table too hard, okay? Say BibleTracksInc.org. Good job. That's a great job. Oh, they, they, they are smacking the table a little bit. We'll try to reduce that background sound, but I think you'll understand the uh, the what it takes to keep uh, a, a rambunctious four-year-old and an energetic two-year-old from destroying the studio by itself. So I'm just glad that they are doing such a good job, and they have done, in my opinion, my humble opinion as their dad, I feel like they've done a pretty good job the past couple of days as well. Now, Miss Lucy, there is a number, some numbers I need you to help me with, okay? If people have a question for you, maybe next week or the week after, we'll ask you guys some questions too. What phone number should they text me at? Should they text us at? Maybe, how about today this? How about, I mean, does this sound like a good idea? How about if you're listening to the radio broadcast and if you want to send a picture, you can send a picture, a selfie, of where you're at right now, what we'll do is we will send you a picture of us back. Wherever we happen to be, when we get that picture maybe, um, as long as we are, um, we have our bed head all fixed up and all that stuff and, and we look presentable and we, we have mom's stamp of approval, we'll send you a picture back. But what I need you to do is this. Think about a question we should ask these two little girls. Now, Miss Lucy, are you ready? Say 309. 309. 316-7240. Good job. Now that's the phone number you can text us at. 309-316-7240. Now tomorrow, Lucy already picked out which gospel track she wants us to talk about. I'll give you a sneak preview. It's called Freedom in forgiveness. I'm so glad we have freedom in forgiveness. We'll talk about that one tomorrow. It's one of our newest gospel tracks. It's been very popular. But again, all of our gospel tracks you can get at BibleTracksInc.org. In just a moment, we will return to our discussion about generations. I'm so glad for the previous generation and the legacy they've left us. I think of Paul Levine, the great history, the heritage that we have, the goodly heritage that we have at Bible Tracks Incorporated. And then I think about the next generation as well. Thanks so much for listening. Don't go anywhere. I will usher these two little girls out of the studio room so we can get into the Bible study. Don't go anywhere. All right, here we are together again. 
I'm a little saddened by the fact that we only have one more day of this week with Emmy and Lucy. But if there's enough demand and enough of you that text in to this phone number, 309 316-7240. If there's enough popular demand, maybe we'll have Emmy and Lucy come back again. Who knows? Maybe I'll be voted out as the host of the program and we'll install one of them. Regardless, I've been having a great time so far. That reminds me, yesterday we did our discussion of generations. We were talking about time. The concept of the word love, for instance, being spelled T. I-M-E. Let's review. In the idea of generations, we, we've read multiple verses. I'll give you some more context here. Let's look at uh, Numbers 32, 13. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. Deuteronomy thirty two twenty, And he said, I will hide my face from them, and I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. Now, all of that doesn't sound very good, but then we continue on to Ecclesiastes 1, verse 4. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. And lastly, for now, Lamentations 5, 19, Thou, O Lord, remainest forever thy throne from generation to generation. This concept of generations is a biblical one. One of the the gentlemen that I worked for, worked with in uh, Akron, Ohio, I was an associate pastor for some years for Pastor Joe Grimaldi. Some of you have heard him on the radio broadcast before. But one of the things I most appreciated about him is his desire to not only empower, but to invest in the next generation, people like me. He didn't think you have to be 40 years old, 50 years old before you can do something great for God. He wanted to take people right where they are and let God do a great work in their life. I always appreciated that. He's always had, and it's something that's rubbed off on me to some degree, is a burning desire to see the next generation go forward for God. Lord, Lord knows that we must have another generation at this time. Tomorrow is too late. We need another generation now. We talked about on Monday the fact that we are the fruit of past generations. We didn't create ourselves. We should commemorate and be thankful for those that have come before. We should celebrate. We should rejoice, as Philippians 4, 4 says. And then we talked about the fact that we are the family of the present generation. We looked at Paul's emphasis on togetherness in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But then let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. There's our text for today, Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Something that has made a firm impact in my life recently is the realization. Now, I'll tell you right now, I'm barely and not even into my third decade of life. I'll listen back to this in years to come, probably with a little bit of uh, a little bit of amusement, probably. But do you realize the fact that our days are so very limited? Can I ask you, very, very bluntly but kindly, to spend time with your family? We have a holiday season coming up, of course, not just Thanksgiving and Christmas, but all these different opportunities to get together. And there will be some among us that will make the foolish decision because of past hurts, because of past situations, circumstances of life, to refuse to spend time with our families. Please don't do that, but can I also apply it spiritually speaking as well? That verse in Hebrews chapter 10, or those two verses, verses 24 and 25, you realize to some degree that's talking about church attendance. That's talking about the fact that there are some that would forsake the assembling of themselves together under the leadership and and under the auspices of a local church. When was the last time? Here's a loaded question. When was the last time you darkened the door of a church? How long ago was it? Was it months ago? 
Was it a year ago? Was it more? You say you don't realize the, the, the situation that's going on in the world right now. Can I tell you that the Bible hasn't changed? And when God allowed the Bible to be put, the pen went to paper or to parchment. God knew that there would be pandemics, there would be epidemics, there would be all of these things, and yet he gave us guidance to get us through all of those things. The Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. I am not, please be very clear, take this in context, I am not advising you to be cavalier with your health. I'm not advising you or, or counseling you to be reckless about how you proceed with different things. There are folks that I completely understand have health concern. But how about this? How many of you have allowed fear to keep you from the church doors for months and a year plus now? How many of you have allowed a little bit of a church closure or a little bit of time or maybe a transition, a pastoral transition? How many of you have allowed that to take you from being a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, and a midweek service Christian down to being there most Sunday mornings or just a Sunday morning Christian? Now, if you go to church on Sunday morning, I am so very glad that you do. But many Bible-believing good churches have services and have activities and have events outside of just Sunday morning. And if you claim, can I say this very kindly, if you claim to be a part of the family, then you should want to spend time with your family. I'm not trying to hurt. Anything I've said today honestly has just been with a heart of love for you. I want you to experience the same joy in family time that I get to at my church. Maybe you'd say, I don't have a good local church to go to and I don't know how to find one. I would love to help you find one in just a few moments. The announcer will be on with all kinds of different ways that you can contact us. Would you please take advantage of that? Get together with your family. It's hard to have togetherness without time. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the fact that not only are we the fruit of past generations, the family of the present generation, but we are the foundation of future generations. And we're going to talk about how to shoulder the troubles of our family and help each other out. Be an encouragement. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day for His glory. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.